everybody, I'm Biebs Kelly, and we are finally having our Grammys Fashion Edition today, discussing all of the truly tragic, horribly awful, highly disappointing red carpet looks from this year's Grammys. We had good, we had bad, we had plainly unflattering, but we also had a few looks that were almost good, like almost really, really nice. Could have been in the best dressed list if they would have just pushed it a little further or styled it a little better or not worn a terrible hairstyle. There were so many that were just almost great. So let's start there. Nothing too jarring. Yet. Let's begin with Alessandra Ambrosio. She wore this silver gown that is very, very smooth, luscious looking, metallic. I like the shape of it. I like the silhouette of it. I like a lot about it. But there's two major problems. First off, she didn't wear the proper undergarments because you can see her belly button and in a dress like this that's metallic-y or satiny or shiny in any way, those types of things are amplified even more. It's even more obvious and it becomes a focal point and it shouldn't be a focal point. Some dresses, some looks or outfits, belly button might be a focal point and that's okay if it's supposed to be, but here, it is not supposed to be the focal point. If she would have just worn a smoothing undergarment, maybe even shapewear, not that she needs shapewear, just that it offers that thicker layer underneath, you wouldn't have had that. You would have had a smoother finish and we could have appreciated the dress and the shape of the dress much better. But I also find the bottom of the dress to look too plasticky, almost like a trash bag. It's just very much not giving that sort of poured liquid gold or liquid metal that satin can give that just looks amazing. This is giving more stiff, plastic, artificial sort of trash bag. We have Alexis Roderick and Billy Joel here, and Alexis Roderick's could have been super duper nice. I really liked it at first, but the more I looked at it, the closer I looked at it, the less I liked it. I do like her styling. I think she did a great job with her jewelry, hair, and makeup here. And the dress has a great start, but it is sitting a little low. It very much looks like it's falling down. It should have had just a little bit more height to the cups. But also this silver part just looks stuck on because you can see the black of the dress off to the sides. So it just looks like it was stuck on there in the front. That's not quite as flattering as you would hope. The skirt is also just a little bit chunky and bulky. So if it had been edited or had a little bit more finesse to it, it would have made the best dress list. Here we have Alex Isley in a custom Christian Siriano look. And this is really beautiful for a lot of reasons. I absolutely love this purple velvet. It's a beautiful color on her and it's a beautiful fresh color to see on the red carpet. I love the draping across the bottom and how it's echoed in the asymmetry, but I'm just not a huge fan of how it's looking around the belly area. I'm not sure if maybe it needed just a slightly different approach to the skirt area or if perhaps some different undergarments might have helped the situation, but I feel like it's just creating a little bit too much of a framing effect to the lower belly area on this dress that's not as flattering as she deserves. Here we have Bonnie McKee giving us a real retro vibe. The dress, I really, really like. I think that the cutout and the asymmetrical sleeves and the train on the sleeve are excellent amount of drama here and provide good balance. It's a great dress, but the hairstyle is very much leaning a little bit too costumey that it took her away from the best dress list just because of that styling. The more I look at it though, the more I'm warming up to the hairstyle. Like she really did lean into the vibe and lean into the look. So I have mixed feelings. I really like it and I like that she went for it and she knew the aesthetic she wanted to go for. I think it could have been really beautiful and fresh with just a complete updo or something a little bit less costumey. What do you think though? Gina Alec had the same problem that a lot of people had, which was these sheer dresses had a lot of fails because of the way that they are doing them now. Rather than having a nude lining or wearing some sort of full bodysuit, they are just wearing nude undies underneath. And it's just very much not a polished look. It takes away from the effect a great deal. It becomes distracting to the eye and it's just not doing it. It's not working. And here she has that exact problem. You can see her strapless bra. You can see her undergarments. And if it weren't for that, it would have been a very successful red mesh lace 
look here. It's a really pretty dress. It's flattering to her. I would have skipped those those shoes though. I would have gone with something a little bit different, maybe a little bit less chunky because they do feel very heavy at the bottom of this slinky dress. Here we have Gordon Goodwin and Vanjie Gunn and this dress on her I quite like. I think it's really, really pretty, but I'm not sure that the cutouts and the shape of the slit are the most flattering for her. I also would have loved to see her in an updo to just let us really see that neckline and have the dress be more of a focal point. This is really kind of closing things off a bit. The shoes also also might be a tad bit clunky and chopping up her leg just a tad there. Haley Khalil had a beautiful, beautiful green dress on here. I absolutely love this take on an opera glove sort of a vibe with the sleeves and the dress itself is gorgeous and it's very beautiful on her. It's just too low on the boob. It's cutting her boob, creating a slight quad boob effect and just not as flattering. If the cup were just up a tad bit more, it would look wonderful. Have all the cleavage you want, just don't make it look like your cups do not fit your boobs. It takes away from the look, it looks less polished, and it actually makes cleavage look less attractive when you have the quad boob effect. Halle Bailey here in a very beautiful dress by Gucci. I really, really like her look overall. There's just literally only one problem with it. Otherwise, it would have made the best dress list. And that is, once again, the undergarments are not serving the dress at all. It's taking away from the look. You can see where she has pasties or perhaps one of those bras that wrap around and just squish and there's a shadow or a dark line across the top of those and then of course she just has on briefs underneath it's much more sexy and much more beautiful to not have it look like your undies are on show but rather to have lining or a bodysuit or something like that that just gives you less noise and you can let the dress and your shape your figure be the star of the show rather than the undies creating all these lines and shadows distracting and taking away from it. Caitlin Howard was wearing this beautiful white ball gown, but there are just a couple of styling mistakes here that could have made it so much more beautiful. If she would have had her hair up, we could have really seen that beautiful neckline. It would have allowed the dress to shine better. The neckline itself though is very, very wide and very, very deep, and it's actually creating a widening effect across her chest that is less flattering. If it had been slightly more narrow and plunged or wide but less deep, it would have been fine, it would have brought balance, but here it's just too much. It's giving her bust area a less flattering look. It's making it look slightly droopy just because of the shape of everything. Also, I think she would have benefited from the waistline to be nipped in a little bit lower, have the skirt begin slightly lower here because it's making her look just a tad bit frumpy, unfortunately. Here we have Kat Capone and Caleb Robbins, and Kat's dress is gorgeous. I absolutely love it. I'm obsessed with it. But for some reason, she put this terrible bag with it. This horribly distracting, ugly bag that just does not work. If she would have had a different bag, she would have made the best dress list. At the Grammys, we see a lot more costumey looks. We see a lot more performance style pieces because it's a lot of musicians and a lot of artists. So you have a greater majority wearing stuff that's more costumey but when you do have somebody wearing something truly beautiful and flattering to them but then they ruin it with something simple like a bag it's just disappointing. Here we have Kelly Clarkson in this beautiful white dress that's very off the shoulder and has a little bit of an asymmetrical neckline here with the fold. I'm not loving it for her though. It's a very polished classic look. She looks absolutely beautiful. I love her hair and makeup for this. Her jewelry is on point. The handbag is fine, but because she has a little bit of an inverted triangle body shape, this is creating an even more dramatic effect of that. It is amplifying the sort of top heavy, despite not liking that term. So it just wasn't a great match for her body type, unfortunately. Lofe is wearing Chanel and this dress I am inclined to be obsessed with because it is polka dots. It has this precious soft pink color, but it is completely ruined by a poor fit and this unfortunate belt situation. I am not certain if this belt was part of the dress and design or something she added on, but no matter. The belt is creating a focal point of the lower belly. It is drawing the eye just just right there, nowhere else. And with this sort of a neckline and this sort of a dress, it's meant to draw your eye up and just stay up by the face and the neckline. But instead we're being distracted by this belt 
and it's just not a flattering situation, unfortunately. Also, the dress just doesn't look to be fitted quite properly. I think if she would have had a better undergarment, she could have gotten a better foundation here to make it just a little bit more flattering to her figure, but also it looks like it maybe needed a tad bit of tailoring around the bust and the waistline as well. Lay Banks is wearing a gold asymmetrical number with a very, very high collar, a cutout around the front. It's got a wrap style bust, and then it's got some sort of a champagne colored or beige sleeve that is so out of place it ruined the look. Also, with her hair down, it takes away from the dress because we cannot see what's going on with the interest around the neckline or the sleeve. So it very much missed the mark when it came to styling and also the sleeve. Leah Talabi is in the near miss category because this could have been great. This does have potential. The skirt, however, though, is a little bit stiff and the weird leaf-shaped sequined cups are very out of place. This look has too many things thrown at it at once. It's just not flattering to her and it's not cohesive enough to really flow nicely. I also think that an updo would have served it much, much better. Now in this dress, there is really one major problem. Everything about Lika's dress is very beautiful and flattering to her, except for this giant shoulder pad that is just way too dramatic and chunky. The chains are maybe a little bit much, but really if it weren't for this giant shoulder pad, it's just creating the one and only focal point here that is all you end up staring at and it looks out of place to the flow of the dress. I think it could have been more successful if perhaps it was just a full sleeve on the other side. That would have helped it bring a little bit better balance, but it's not so I would have preferred it without the chunky shoulder pad. Here we have a handful of people looking just fine, nothing particularly special, nothing particularly wrong with the looks. Could they have been better? Yes, 100% these could have been better, but were they the worst of the night? No, they weren't. We don't have any major mistakes across these looks here, they're just okay. I guess that's better than tragic. Selena Hill trying to lean into that metallic trend, but holding her purse in a way that's completely blocking the rest of the dress, and the dress itself looks a little too heavy and wrinkly. It's giving off a cheap vibe, unfortunately. Also here with this high neckline, lots of coverage up here, an updo might have been a little bit more fresh for this particular cut of dress. Shelly Clark would have been total best dress list if it weren't so darn wrinkly in the dress skirt here. The skirt of this dress is so wrinkly. It is the only reason why she didn't hit best dress because I absolutely love the twisted fabric across here and the corseted design of the bodice. It is so beautiful. Her necklace is gorgeous, but it's wrinkly. What's happening? Shuba was wearing a semi-naked dress here with lots and lots of sequins patterned throughout, and it is just not coming together properly. She has these really, really chunky, with an ankle strap, white shoes that are obviously completely visible with the style of dress, and the lining, once again, with the foundation garments and whatnot, are just not serving the look overall. It's taking away from the look. You're adding a lot of lines and visual noise underneath the sheer paneling, that it's just not working well. The rest of it I do like. I think I would have really liked this and put it on best dressed if it had just been lined nude because then you wouldn't have even been able to see the shoes. They wouldn't have mattered and the undergarment situation would not have come into play. So if it had just been lined, it would have hit best dressed because it's a really cool idea. I love the swirly scrolls of it. It could have been great. Sophia Ritchie wore Saint Laurent and this is all right. I mean, I'm not in love with it. The material is slightly sheer, which in this case is giving off a cheap look, especially with the collar as well. It looks like t-shirt material. It looks not nice. It looks not Saint Laurent. It's unfortunate because the silhouette of it could have been really, really nice as a maternity look here, but the fact that it's sort of see-through and sheer is really, really taking away from it and making it look cheap. And also this hairstyle, it's just so severe on her. I have never been a huge fan of the center parts on most people, but Sophia Ritchie, especially with the uh, highlights that she has, the money pieces that she has in her hair, it just ends up looking very, very severe, very, very distracting. You can just see this like swirl of the highlight across her head. It's so overwhelming to her overall look. It really takes away from what otherwise would have been a decent hair and makeup look. Now this next look is going to be controversial. We have Taylor Swift in Scaparelli and 
I'm not loving it. I think that the dress itself has so much fabric and drama to it. It's a big dress. It's got this big gathering here with the draping coming out and you know it's got a little extra volume there on the hip. That's totally fine. And then she's got the black opera gloves matching with the black shoes. That all is completely fine. But the amount of necklaces involved paired up with the hairstyle itself it's just a little heavy. It's creating a sort of heavy look. Something about this look overall is widening and just heavy. It's too much, I think. I think it really would have been a success if she would have done an updo of some kind and fewer necklaces, perhaps just the one with the black pendant or just the choker with an updo would have been amazing. But unfortunately, this took her off the best dress list because it ended up overall creating a really heavy aesthetic. Felicia Butterfield here looks amazing until you get to those thigh cutouts. Those little triangles there on the thigh area just are not that flattering. It's drawing the eye down rather than letting you focus on the interest of the neckline. It's just taking away from the look. If it weren't for that, I think this would have been on the best dress list if it weren't for those cutouts. Yolanda Adams wearing a very mismatched suit and jumpsuit here. The sequined jumpsuit underneath this green color is just not vibing enough with the blazer with the roses stuck on. I think that this could have been really successful if she had a more neutral or matching jumpsuit underneath. It could have worked, but the green paired up with the loud roses is too much. Now before we take a look at a few looks that were spared from the worst dressed list because they had at least one or two things going for them, the next to worst dressed list, let's take a look at these costumey looks. As I said, the Grammys is notorious for having high drama, very costumey looks. I would almost prefer more in the way of costumey looks than what we saw at this year's Grammys rather than so many just mediocre or pretty bad, just kind of meh, didn't try too hard sort of looks because that's what we had a lot of. But here we have Beyonce doing a full Western sort of a look. I'm not loving the sort of awkward look that we have happening with the high heels and the shorts or whatever. This was originally a pantsuit, I believe, and she had it changed into shorts or perhaps a skirt. I can't quite tell in these pictures, but it's just looking slightly awkward in the leg. But other than that, I think it's fun. It's the Grammys. That's where you get to do stuff like this. Iris Starr literally looks like she's ready to go on Dancing with the Stars in this outfit. This does not look so much Grammys ready because you hardly even have a skirt to speak of at all and you're gonna be sitting at an awards ceremony for a few hours. I think that it was maybe not the best choice, needed just a tad bit more fabric involved to make it appropriate for the event, but regardless, it landed her in the costume category, and as a costume, I suppose it's fine. Of these other costumey looks, I would say the red one with the tree up above, I suppose is the most interesting. I feel bad for whoever had to sit behind her. And Doja Cat in the most messy looking costume of the night. This one was shocking for a lot of people. It is really intense in terms of a look overall. I'm not loving it. Put it in the costume category. Of the bunch of costume looks, Sasha Ann's might have been the ugliest. What is with the unicorns? That is my question. Now on to these that were pretty bad, but I spared them from the worst dress list because you're gonna need to buckle up for the worst dress list. It is really, really rough. Let's begin with Allison Russell here. This fabric ended up just looking really, really cheap and like some sort of cheap bedspread or cheap curtains, no bueno. Chloe Bailey, I'm not 100% behind this one. I'm not sure that it was the most flattering option for her. And again, the fabric just is not, it's not beautiful looking. It's just a bit strange. It might have been more beautiful in person. It might have had a bit more life to it, but it's just looking kind of drab and a bit like upholstery. Christina Chirambolo's dress was way too stiff and just not flattering for her body type. She needed something that had a bit of a flow to the skirt at least. And Fantasia Barino is giving Jack Skeleton vibes with these stripes. The gloves look messy and oversized and they have all these lines, these linear sort of patterns. So the fact that they are bunching and twisting is so distracting and obvious that this was very much not well pulled off at all. This is really rather ugly, but I do like her hair and makeup. I think that it looks really beautiful in that. 
Isabel Lolly has way too huge of bows on her shoes and the mini dress with the train is just not tied in together. There's no flow. It's not connected. It looks very disjointed. It needs something to bring it together. Jamila Jamil's dress is a great color for her. I don't mind her hairstyle though. An updo might have been nice for the halter neck style of the top, but it is completely eating up her waistline here. The sort of ballooned skirt is not very flattering shape for starters, but it's also starting way too high, making it look like she has very little waist here and it's kind of widening her lower belly and hip area unfairly. Kat Graham wore a sculptural dress with opera gloves that is just way too much. It's so intense. I do not understand this big, huge cardboard flap. It is just too bulky, too big, not flattering. It looks bad. It looks crooked. It looks not well done. I get what they were going for, but too much of it is just not well executed. It doesn't even look like the white of the cardboard flap she's wearing matches the white of the dress either. And from the side, it is completely unflattering to her body, and that is really unfortunate. It looks uncomfortable too. And then we have Kelly Osborne in this. That's just got maybe one too many things going on. It's a little messy looking. The sheerness and shine that the fabric has paired up with all the different texture and lines happening, and the nude lining you can see underneath peeking out above the sort of spiky bodice neckline. It's just, it's too much. This looks like messy chaos, but she looks beautiful. In a custom red Dolce & Gabbana dress, I am confused how this came out looking so bad on Kylie. I like some parts of it, the swishy skirt, the train sort of situation, but I do not like the pattern and texture throughout the waistline and bodice area is making things look wider and bigger. It's not flattering to her figure and the bust situation is just horribly ugly. As you can see, many of these near miss looks like these just have one too many thing thrown at them. They are just a little bit too much. Whether it's the styling or the dress itself, it just needed to be reined in a little bit to make it more attractive, more beautiful on the person or just simply a more cohesive look. But then we also have these sorts that would have been not too terrible if they had just been fitted better. We have too much room in the waistlines, too much room in the bust. This collection of looks weren't the worst of the worst, but they are still so bad in so many ways. Like this on Zana Rabbit's Rassi is just heavy and clunky. It does not go with her tiny little frame. She needed something that had some sort of movement to it. She needed something less consuming for her. This looks just huge and, and chunky. Similarly with all of these sheer looks, in years past, the naked dress trend, you rarely saw actual undergarments under the dresses. And now in an attempt to update the naked dress, rather than just leave it behind where it belongs, they are trying to do just undies, visible undies under these naked dresses. So they're not lining the dresses with anything. They're not wearing a nude bodysuit or anything like that or a nude slip or anything. They're just going with undies and a completely sheer dress and it's just not appealing. It's not working. When you can see the line of the bra or the undies under a dress, it takes away from the effect. You are immediately distracted by that and looking at that because it adds visual noise, it adds shadows, it changes tone underneath so it creates a more incongruous look. It chops up the look and the frame. It chops up your figure as well and it just takes away from the overall dress and silhouette and the beauty of the person wearing it. Also, what are we doing with this watermelon here? Why are we choosing ugly dresses and ugly accessories? What's happening? Posing like this certainly doesn't help matters. Or in this case, we have a nude lining, but it stops too early and the nude overlay continues creating a very awkward effect down at the bottom that you just can't take your eyes off of. It looks so strange. If you can see pasties, if you can see the G-string, it's just not working. It does not look attractive. It makes the area look awkward and large and not appealing. Or we even have situations where there's just way too much happening and you have briefs and you have nude netting between and you've got all this volume. Like these looks are just getting worse and worse. It's okay to leave behind the nude looks and it's okay to line them so that you don't have to have your briefs become the one and only focal point of the look. 
As for Heidi Klum's, I am not a huge fan of the sheer mesh with corset inspired lines. These I've seen quite a little bit. Donatella Versace wore it to the Met Gala last year. I've seen um, Margot Robbie try this out. It tends to create a really widening effect across the waistline. And we all know Heidi Klum has an amazing figure, but this does not do it justice in any way, shape or form. We also saw a handful of looks that just came across way too casual. This is an award ceremony. So although things that are really costumey and dramatic or maybe avant-garde. We're not seeing as many ball gowns, of course, at the Grammys. We never have. It still doesn't mean you go casual. And these looks, no matter how expensive they may have been or designer or not, they just came across a little too casual for an actual red carpet walk. Particularly this pajama look, it literally looks like a nighty and bathrobe. I have no idea why she thought this was a good idea. This is Molly Tuttle and it is an awful ensemble in every single way. And then she's wearing nylons that are far too thick and have some sort of sheen to them. Wrong choice of nylon. And then if you're going to do a nylon, please, for heaven's sake, do not do open-toed heels. Wear closed-toe heels because this just looks so horrible in every way. I do not understand this at all. Opting for something unflattering seemed to be a theme at this year's Grammys. We have BB Rexa in something that is admittedly a huge improvement from the weird horsetail dress that she previously wore. This, you know, looks nicer than that. Her hair and makeup look absolutely beautiful, but this still did not come across as a flattering look for her. It's very widening for her hip area and the opera gloves are looking too messy. There is, once again, one too many things thrown at this that it takes it into an unflattering category. Terribly unflattering looks with bra straps showing. Why is that happening? Please tell me what is going on with Niecy Nash in this picture. Many of terribly unflattering, oversized, loose opera glove Let's just make it clear, opera gloves should not be loose like this, especially if they are sheer. They need to be nicely fitted, at least through the wrist. If you want to have some rouging or some extra fabric up here, fine, but it doesn't work well with sheer because then it just creates visual noise and that is just way too distracting. But these loose, gaping, flopping opera gloves are not it. This sort of shape of skirt is rarely the most flattering option for women and paired up with these embellishments and all the other stuff going on, this just end up looking a cluttered mess. But slightly improved from that, we have a lot of just mediocre looks, things that were just okay. Things that had interest but weren't necessarily a wow moment, had a handful of styling errors or could have been improved a great deal, but were certainly far from the worst. And that is what we have here. Things are just all right. This one is quite interesting. I think from afar, it's a little bit strange because you can't quite tell what's happening, but up close, you can see a little bit more of it. It looks a little bit better up close, I'm sure. Dua Lipa wore custom courage and I like the color, I suppose. I like the texture, but I do not like this look overall. It's not very flattering. It's making her look much bigger than she is. The cutouts there low on the hip are way too distracting. They just look like a mistake. They look weird. It looks like your pocket got torn or something. It's just not working. I do like the cuffs quite a little bit. Those are kind of fun. But yeah, just a lot of meh. Just okay, nothing impressive, nothing amazing, nothing spectacularly beautiful here. Fabric on Gail King's outfit just ended up looking really cheap. It had a little bit too much of a sheen to it, a little too much shine to it for the flash photography, and then paired up with the sort of bathrobe looking, dressing gown looking coat, it just gave off a cheap vibe. But the silhouette of it isn't terrible. I think that the bust area, the bodice area of it is quite flattering for her, but the rest of it was just a bit of a miss. Celine Dion looked really, really nice and polished, but I am not 100% behind the length of this coat paired up with the dress peeking out from the bottom. That was slightly awkward to the eye, but I give her a pass. It was so lovely to see her there. But it is time to take a look at the worst dressed list. This Grammys was exceptionally awful. There was not one interesting, sculptural, exciting, costumey piece the way we have seen in years past from some of the major stars. In fact, a lot of the major stars were not even there. 
the Grammys are slipping. It is just not becoming a big deal anymore, it seems, and that's unfortunate. But here we have this way too Valentine's Day inspired look on Viandre Mitchell. This looks like a toddler made it. No offense to the toddlers. They make beautiful things, but it is definitely not a dress for a woman at a red carpet event for an awards ceremony. It's just not. This looks like something you might wear as a child for a Valentine's Day party. It's terrible. Charlotte Lawrence, we already saw this on the sheer disasters section of the video, but it deserves another mention here for being just so truly tragically pulled off. If this dress had a nude lining or she just wore a nude bodysuit underneath, it would not have been so bad, but this is truly terrible. Chrissy Teigen looked awful. This is terrible. What is this? Why is this happening? This made it look so, 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 so strange. It looked like she was carrying something ginormous around her, like some sort of huge hula hoop situation. I don't even know. This is just bizarre. A big pool donut? I don't know. It's crazy. It made everything look awkward. The proportions are all wrong. There's way too much volume and then nothing. It's just so bizarre. This is one of the ugliest things I've ever seen someone wear on the red carpet. And that's saying a lot. I mean, for somebody who is a supermodel, if anyone could have pulled it off, it would have been a supermodel and she is one. So that just tells you how horrible this dress is. It's awful. What is this? This is horrible. This is awful. This looks like something unfinished. Who took away her skirt? Who hid it from her? Why did she have to show up in underwear and pantyhose? Why didn't she have her skirt? I absolutely love this blazer top. It is really, really cool. But where is her skirt or pants? What happened? This does not look good. This does not look like fashion. This is not neat. This is terrible. This is awful and embarrassing. I feel bad for her. Her hair and makeup look really cute. Erin Allen Kane, I have no idea what this is, but it is horrible. It looks like something just awful that somebody just made who didn't know what they were doing. The skirt has way too much volume. It is widening her. It's making her look heavy and ginormous when she's not. It's adding a lot of weight to her belly and her hips. Obviously, the high-low effect is very, very messy. All of the tool adds to the mess. And then this just looks like somebody got carried away with the hot glue gun. Terrible. Jade Starling is has just way too much happening here, and it is unfortunately quite unflattering. Jordan Sparks wearing a super ugly outfit. I was shocked when I saw this. I literally went, what is happening? What is this? Who did that to her? That's mean. The boobs are the worst part. They look so terrible. It's just like, it looks like she has bags on top of her boobs or something. This is just awful in every single way. I can't find one good thing about this except maybe the fabric looks nice in the train, but why does it have a train? Why does it have a plastic thing on the front? It looks cheap. It looks horrible. It is unflattering. Worst dressed. Miley Cyrus is always one to do something crazy with her fashion and her outfits, but this one I think was just taking it a step too far. It's not flattering, unfortunately. I do not like the sort of conical boobs. I do not like the loincloth vibes that it's giving. The shoes are nowhere near acceptable for this look. All of this happening up here around the collar could have been okay with paired up with something more simple and Egyptian inspired everywhere else, but it's just not working with this. This you cannot even call a dress, but it is on the worst dress list. Also her hair, who did that to her hair? What is happening? Why did they do that? It is a terrible hairstyle. It took away from everything. <laughs> Missy Mazzoli looks like she's wearing something super duper cheap and super duper old fashioned and just not attractive or appealing. It created weird proportions for her bust and it's just looking cheap and poorly done. It's also really quite widening to her figure, unfortunately, as well. Molly Tuttle, again, we've already been over it, but it is firmly on the worst dress list. Now, I know that worst dress list was bad, but we have the best dress coming up. But first, let's take a look at the men's wear. There was a lot of interesting looks from the men. Some of them not so great. A lot of them were leaning a little bit more costumey in their vibe, but some of them weren't terrible. Ashley Gorley looked just fine. 
everything was fine. Nothing particularly wrong here. On the other hand, Chris Olsen looks absolutely terrible. Way too many textures and amounts of shine happening here. It's just too messy looking, not loving it. Daryl Camper, why does he have a huge train hanging off of his coat jacket, like huge coattails? Not loving it. Ed Sheerhan should have tried a little harder. L. David Aguilar looks like he's dressing for a part, like a role in a movie as like a detective in the 70s. Jacob Collier has way too much happening. This patchwork suit looks like something that should never have been made. Jake Peterson, I do not like this. It's terrible. He looks like he's wearing a combination of like a gi and a robe and pajamas. Not a fan. I'm not loving John Legend's suit here. The texture changes are a bit much. I've never been a fan of those ties. I just don't like this one. I feel like I would have liked the shirt if it weren't for that tie. Jonathan McReynolds looked completely fine. Thank goodness. Justin Tranter, do not like it. Not one little bit. No part of this do I like. A lot of these guys wore stuff that was just really chunky looking, really bulky looking, not very flattering or didn't look very formal. It looked kind of more cash and kind of thrown together. That was unfortunate. I mean, I understand once again, a lot of the time it's more of a costume vibe, which is totally fine for the Grammys, but it still maybe could have been more stylish or, or more flattering to them. Lenny Kravitz, I don't know what's happening. He is at every single awards show wearing something crazy. I'm not a fan of this one. I feel like the pants are too skinny for the look, it's making him look really top heavy, like his legs are tiny, but that could just be the angle and the pose. We also had a lot of like really oversized upholstery inspired 70s sort of aesthetic coming from some of these guys. I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't really like the big oversized stuff. Like I don't mind baggy, but these that are like hugely comically oversized and looking like 70s upholstery, just it's not working. I think Scott Evans looked quite nice. Tay Keith looked like he was wearing a Minecraft inspired suit. Ted Danson, best dressed man. Blue velvet suit jacket, perfect. Will I am, I absolutely hate the shoes. What's happening with those shoes? Get them away, they are bad. Okay, you guys, that was tragic. It was truly the worst red carpet event this year for fashion. There has not been another red carpet event this year so, 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 so bad as that. It was tacky, it was tasteless, it was awful. But there are a few beautiful looks to save the day. I have the best dress list for you. I hate leaving you on a sour note. So here we have it. One of the best maternity looks I have ever seen on the red carpet. This is Jessica Leiden and this is beautiful. I absolutely love the pattern to the top of the bodice and the beautiful flowy skirt and train from the sleeves. This is beautiful, gorgeous. Perfect maternity look and perfect styling. Look at her. Her hair and makeup are perfect for this high collar. This is gorgeous. In vintage Alexander McQueen, one of my favorite looks of the evening, we have Alex Earl. This is amazing. Alexander McQueen is a thing for a reason. I mean, this is impeccable. This is beautiful. This is perfection. Her hair styling and everything looks beautiful with it. Her makeup and jewelry are also perfect for it. This is just mwah perfection. Bianca Bridges, I think, looked pretty nice. I mean, I'm not a huge fan. I'm not fully convinced that the sort of asymmetrical spaghetti strap situation was perfect, but I like it. And I think that everything else looks really beautiful and flattering on her. So she made it to the best dress list, but she's not number one best. Vic Hope looked really, really beautiful in her gown. She's doing this sort of metallic look with this pattern that creates all these diagonal lines. That's very, very flattering. I don't love her hairstyle with the little f sticking out of the back, but the rest is perfect. In Giorgio Armani Privé, we have Janelle Monnier, and this is stunning. This is beautiful in every way. It has perfect balance. It looks impeccable on her. As you can see, her styling with the necklace, the earrings, the makeup, the hair, it's all cohesive. It's flowing together perfectly. She let the dress be the star of the show, but did encourage the eye to come back up to the face with that choker. This is just excellent. It is perfect in every way. I also like that the flower is just one. It's centered. It's part of the dress. It looks like it's cohesive and it's got various colors to it that tie into the dress really nicely. So it has less of a stuck on vibe to some of the floral looks that we have seen. That's a trend this year. It's going to be here for a while, but this one was done better than a lot of others. So this is an absolutely stunning, perfect look.
Lady London looked really, really beautiful in this red dress. It's not absolutely perfect. The asymmetrical situation with the sleeve or strap is not my absolute favorite, but the rest of it is really well done and beautiful, and her hair, makeup, and jewelry are on point. Amy Wilson wearing a Balmain suit here. This is beautiful. This looks really, really nice on her. It's quite flattering. The shoulder pads might be a tad bit too much, but she does have a big hat, so that helps to balance it a little bit, but I like absolutely everything else about it. Madison Beer in one of the most beautiful dresses we saw. I absolutely love everything about it. The waistline of this is so flattering. It's very, very beautiful. The cups don't look like they're coming down too far. It might look just a tad bit slippy, but not enough to be mad at. The ball gown is gorgeous. The skirt of this looks very, very beautiful. There's a couple of wrinkles here and there, but nothing major. The only thing I will say is that she should have definitely worn a necklace. Olivia Rodrigo is wearing vintage Versace. She looks lovely in these sort of classic silhouettes, and this is just a perfect example of that absolutely beautiful and well done. One of my favorites from the evening was Paris Hilton in Reem Accra. This is really beautiful. As you can see, a sheer dress or a naked effect dress that has a lining. Its lining is not see-through and it's so much more successful. It allows you to get this sort of open stitch work trend in a dress and appreciate it and have it look nice and beautiful and you're not distracted by the fact that she's wearing briefs or whatever it is that she has on underneath the way we are with the other naked dresses where there is no lining this is beautiful the color is stunning and different as well one of the few wearing something just with a truly beautiful color absolutely love it victoria monet is wearing this gorgeous bronzy gold satin versace dress this is so beautiful in so many ways it is perfect now i will say i don't think that it's absolutely perfect throughout the corseted portion and the bust i think that the bust maybe could have been a little bit more flattering to her specific shape and once again we have the sort of sheer bodice with the corseted lines on top and that is not my favorite but this is all still very tonal that it's much less obvious so it's not giving us as much of that widening effect that we get when it's a lighter color sheer bodice with the paneling and the boning on it it's not quite the same as that so this one I find to be a lot more successful the satin portion of this is just so gorgeous the satin looks buttery and beautiful and sumptuous so while it's not the best dress it's definitely on the best dress list because it's so well done and beautiful that was literally it. Those were the only good looks of the evening. The rest was just tragic and terrible and awful. What was your favorite of the best dressed? What was your favorite of the night? And what was your least favorite? Please leave it in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me for today's Grammys Fashion Edition. I will see you next time. Have a happy day, everybody. Bye!